Hello everyone, my name is Sai. You might know me from my novel-length analysis series of Heaven's Lost Property and why it's amazing, which made this video something of an inevitability. So, Plunderer, the next big manga created by the same author as Heaven's Lost Property, Sum Nizuki, just recently got an anime adaptation. Now, I originally read the first two chapters of Plunderer back when it came out and bounced off of it almost immediately because I thought it was bad and stupid, but didn't really read enough back then to have a concrete opinion. But then, I started doing a manga book club of Plunderer with my friend Isaiah, where we read through the manga chapter by chapter and gave commentary about it as we went, and in doing so, I confirmed that it was even worse than I initially thought. And now the anime is out, and it's somehow even worse than that. Also, a warning up front, this video will contain some spoilers, but trust me, the manga's plot is so bad it really isn't worth caring about. So, that being said, let's jump right in. So, what even is Plunderer? Simply put, Plunderer is... a mess. Plunderer is a battle shown in action show where each person is wearing a number that literally tells you how strong they are, which means there's never any tension in the action scenes. And the only way Minasuki has to contrive tension is to have characters constantly pull bigger numbers out of their ass, sometimes by peeling off a sticker over their previous number to reveal an even bigger number, or by showing they were hiding a second, even biggerer number in their pocket the whole time. Plunderer is a show where things just happen, irrespective of logical consistency or rules established by the narrative, so long as they look cool, because the target audience is clearly 12-year-olds who won't question it. Plunderer is a comedy fanservice manga like Heaven's Lost Property, except with worse jokes and terrible characters. Plunderer is also a dark and gritty world, where people are tortured and killed in wars, and where starving children drive people to horrible and desperate means to survive, depicted just pages away from the aforementioned comedy and fanservice. Plunderer is about five different manga at once, crammed into a single terrible conflicting mess of tones and intentions. There is just so much to talk about here, let's just throw a dart and start with characters. The characters are all terrible. Our protagonist, Hina, who by the way looks exactly like Nymph from SNO, because Minazuki can only draw like three character designs, can be summarized as an audience surrogate that cries a bunch. For the first 20 chapters of the manga, she has zero personality or character, just getting dragged along into events because she has nothing else better to do. Of course, around chapter 20 or so, Minazuki realized he had forgotten to give his main character any character, and so a switch is flipped and she just gains a completely new personality one chapter to make up for her complete lack of one prior. Not that I like that new personality either, by the way, and even then she is super inconsistent, but I guess some character is technically better than no character. But unlike a lot of the other amateurish mistakes in Plunderer, I think writing Hina to be an idiot originally was intentional, because that made it so much easier for Minazuki to write exposition in those crucial opening chapters. And really quick, let's tangent to talk about that. Plunderer is fanfiction tier amateur hour when it comes to exposition. In the first chapter, episode, whatever, Hina, the supposed main character, acts as our audience surrogate in this pseudo-fantasy world where everyone has a count on their body. But the only way Minazuki could make that work was to make her a fucking idiot. So, despite living in this world all her life and traveling across the entire continent, Hina, somehow, remains oblivious as to what counts are, how they work, and what they do, despite this all being incredibly common knowledge in their world. But there she is, asking how basic parts of her reality work, stuff that she should know, just so Minazuki has an excuse to write a whole bunch of exposition and tell us, the audience, the stuff that we don't know. Hina's entire role in the first 10 chapters of the manga is basically to prompt characters for exposition, to the point, actually, that her repeating something another character just said but as a question became a running joke in our book club. 
this world is ruled by numbers. And because Nimbus is a fucking idiot, she says, ruled, ruled by, by numbers? numbers? <laughs> I, I don't understand any of this. Please explain. Wait, uh, we breathe oxygen? To be what? fair, to be fair, this isn't like an exclusive thing. It's very common for anime characters to just be like, if, if not to, repeat to do, the, to do the Metal Gear Solid thing. Yeah, where, Psycho Mantis. Yeah, where you, were, where you repeat the last three words of the speaker sentence Fucking the question. Otacon, just like, Snake, this world is ruled by numbers. Ruled, ruled by, by numbers. numbers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and David asks Hina. Are you a ballot holder? And uh, as usual, she goes, about what? She, she's she's descended into not even being able to repeat back to her. Yeah. <laughs> by numbers. You know, are you a ballot holder? Ruled by numbers. Yeah, what? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for someone known as the fabled ace. Ruled by numbers. <laughs> so he says, hand it over. She goes, ruled by numbers. <laughs> <laughs> he says, go ahead and bet your stars. And she goes, Bet my stars! <laughs> Ruined by numbers! <laughs> Why is there so much of this? It's such terrible writing! Getting back to the characters, then there's Licht, who in the first episode at least is fucking abhorrent. The only way I can even justify the opening scene where he goes around raping Hina is just to say that Mimizuki had been writing Heaven's Lost Property for eight years prior, and so it's just so. Stuck on autopilot, I guess. They just made him act like Tomoki without really thinking too much about it. Tomoki was also a pervert who'd harass girls in comedy scenes. But not only was he actually funny. Yes! But at least he's introduced as a normal guy, who also potentially has some interesting things happening with him, and then only turns into a gremlin for comedy's sake halfway into the first episode, after you've at least gotten some opportunity to get to like him. But Licht being introduced as a gremlin, groping Hina with super awkward and poorly written dialogue where he bounces back and forth between groping her and asking for money is, I think, the single worst character introduction in anything that I've ever seen. And then we have Nana, a walking exposition machine and amazing human plot device, who you can literally surgically remove from the plot and miss nothing as long as you trade her to the characters for a copy of Bill Wirtz's History of the Entire Plunderer World, I guess, and the Time Machine from Steins Gate. And of course, she's in league with Minazuki here, so despite being perfectly happy to be the exposition machine in every other scene, in the first episode, she very crucially doesn't tell Hina the one thing about Counts that will conveniently get her into trouble in the next scene when she doesn't know that one specific thing. How unlucky. And then there's David, a character so deep and well-written that I had to check the manga's glossary to know that his name was David. He is a cartoon villain, who tricks Hina into following him so he can rape her. And then when he realizes that she has the incredibly important MacGuffin, after she takes it out and hands it to him, saying, Look at this! Stands up and starts to attack her so he can get the thing she was just trying to give to him before he started attacking her. And then he gets beaten up by Licht in a fight scene that somehow takes half an episode despite ending in a single hit, because the anime's pacing is just that bad. Now, later we do get some wildly better characters, but they're all side characters who you only occasionally see, whereas we are constantly stuck with Licht, Hina, and Nana, like bubblegum we can't quite scrape off our shoe. Next up, let's move to the writing, my favorite. And oh boy, writing contrivance, thy name is Plunderer. Shit just happens in Plunderer. Doesn't matter if it makes sense or not just as long as it looks cool. The goal of the entire manga is to have as many shocking two-page spreads as possible, strung together by whatever terrible writing is necessary. 
about once per chapter, the most convenient thing possible will happen, like two main characters just bumping into each other in some random back alley. Sometimes horses just magically appear because the next scene has to involve a horse, and on one occasion, an antagonist turns and helps the heroes temporarily, and then Hina's bag splits open and drops the incredibly important MacGuffin right in front of him, and he goes, Hey, wait a minute! and starts fighting them again. On that note, there's also a revolving door of antagonists in Plunderer, mainly on account of there being a drug that makes you turn evil, which is the epitome of Minazuki's lazy writing. All it takes is one injection, and this person is evil now. Who cares if it makes sense? So characters will start off bad, become good, and then get injected and turn evil, then they'll fight again and become good again, until the next time a battle needs to happen, and they get injected and become evil again. Interesting antagonists with sympathetic motivations whose ideals are tested over time and eventually changed? Nah, who needs that when you have a drug that makes you be evil? I'll bet you guys $20 billion in the final battle, everyone will be on the hero side, and they'll walk up to go confront the villain, who will just pull out the medic's gun from TF2, and then Lick will just have to boss rush the entire fucking cast. The world building of Plunderer is also non-existent, outside of what allows bullshit shonen battles to happen. Despite everyone in this world having a number on their body, which forces them to obey the orders of people with higher numbers, and where having your number reduced to zero means death, fucking nothing about their world is any different to any other generic fantasy world. You can think about this concept for 10 seconds, and have already put more thought into it than Mizuki did. For example, since these counts can be so easily abused, surely the method by which your number goes up and down would be a closely guarded secret. Nana's count, for example, is the number of times a customer told her her food was good and goes down if someone tells her it was bad. Surely she should be keeping this a secret, since by knowing this, some asshole could easily kill her by review bombing her on the fantasy version of Yelp. But nope. She, and anyone else, will freely tell you what their count is if you just ask, and sometimes not even that. One also wonders how the justice system in this world works. Like, in that example I just gave, would I be charged with manslaughter for killing Nana via her count, or would the judge just wave it off because that's how the world works? I don't know. Or what about this? What if I, with a count of 100, went up to a local shopkeeper with a count of 50 and ordered them to give me all their food and money? Is that illegal in this universe, or the system functioning as intended? Either way, I don't know how someone with an absurdly high count wouldn't have just completely upended this entire society by now and reduced everything to total anarchy, or those born with easily increasable counts rule completely over everyone else. But... Like I said, by even asking these questions, you and I have already put more thought into this world than Minazuki ever did. The answer to all of these questions is, please just shut up and try and enjoy the action scenes. And then there's the fan service, and oh boy, the fan service. So Plunderer's fan service is at incredible odds with the tone of the rest of the story, which is a Game of Thrones-esque dark fantasy pages away from Hina getting her tits out, or Sonohara getting raped for the fifth time. Now, SNO was also something of a tonal tightrope walk, as it tried to simultaneously tell a serious story alongside a perverted comedy. But where SNO succeeds, where Plunderer fails, is that SNO never goes anywhere near as dark as Plunderer does, with the exception of the final ten chapters, during which time the fan service and comedy is smartly disposed of so as to allow the story to go that dark. But Plunderer is a never-ending Shadow the Hedgehog tier edge fest from beginning to end, which simultaneously tries to do the perverted comedy thing, and those two just aren't compatible. There's this moment later in the manga where, during a flashback, we see a starving child eating what little scraps of food his father had been able to steal for him. This is probably about as close the manga ever gets to being properly dark as opposed to edgy. This image gave me pause. It's a shockingly realistic and disturbing image of a four-year-old on the verge of death. 
But in the chapter prior, we had Hina getting naked so she can try and fuck Licht, and a few chapters from now, we'll have Pele doing a medical examination of Lin by pulling her legs apart as she gets super embarrassed. These two things do not work in the same manga, let alone pages apart. And it's not just that. The problem with Minazuki trying to create a dark and serious world for this show is that with the singular exception of that starving child, it's all so incredibly half-assed. Sure, death does happen, but only to incredibly minor background characters, or sometimes to characters poofed into existence in that very chapter, or sometimes to characters we've never even met just so we can feel sad. But at the same time, all the main characters have plot armor out the ass. Main characters get shot and cut and stabbed and impaled, but none of them ever actually die. There's a moment later in the manga where Hina is forced by a villain to play Russian roulette. She loads one bullet into a six-chamber pistol, and Hina, without blinking and in rapid succession, fires five shots at her own head, and they're all blanks. The villain then reloads the gun with two bullets and hands it back to her, and Hina fires another four shots at her own head, and none of them are bullets. And repeat. Hina literally putting a loaded gun to her head and pulling the trigger 14 times without a single bullet actually firing is the purest, most perfect definition of plot armor I have ever seen in my entire life. That's what I mean when I say Plunderer feels like five different manga stitched together into a single Frankenstein's monster. And all of this leads me to one conclusion. Minazuki had no plan for any of this. He started the manga by copying what worked for SNO, wacky comedy and fan service, but didn't stop to develop any of the characters or the world before doing so. And as the series went on and started to gradually find its own identity as more of a grim and serious fantasy story, it was held back by an obligation to keep doing the comedy and fan service that it started out with. Minazuki was like Gromit, laying the tracks down one at a time in front of him while already on the speeding train, blind to the destination and only thinking of how to keep the momentum going. And the end result of all of that is a terrible story that swerves unfocused through fight scenes, some splash pages of gorgeous art connected by plot contrivances and terrible writing, and some of the worst tonal clashes I've ever seen in my entire life. Now, despite everything I've said, I do think there is a decent manga somewhere in here, buried under layers and layers of bullshit. Some of the characters are alright, portrayed well and with decently written arcs, the art's great, in the manga, at least, the anime looks like garbage. And some of the action scenes are cool. But so much of the show is terrible nonsense that I could not possibly care. This video is honestly only skimming the surface of this ocean of terrible writing. And if you want to see more, I do recommend watching our Plunderer book clubs linked below for a more specific and in-depth deconstruction. But... Honestly, more so than that mess, what I care about is, and always has been, Heaven's Lost Property. And in regards to that, I view Plunderer as both a good and bad thing. On the one hand, it sucks because now that a bad story has been adapted badly into a terrible anime, my job of playing defense for the genuinely good things in SNO just got that much harder. Practically all the advertising for Plunderer has been from the creator of Heaven's Lost Property, because lord knows the story can't stand on its own two decrepit feet. But by doing that, they're dragging SNO's name through the mud. The best case scenario in that regard is honestly that Plunderer just slinks off to the bottom of Mal, and no one ever thinks about or watches it again, because at least then SNO would be spared. But on the bright side, I personally see Plunder as valuable insight into Heaven's Lost Property. For example, in SNO, spoiler alert, Hiori commits suicide in order to transfer her memories into the villain, Chaos, so she can learn right from wrong. Despite the fact she could have just had a conversation with her and told her with words instead, and then she'd still be alive. 
If you go back to the book club for that chapter, 69, you'll see that Isaiah and myself immediately recognize this the stupidest thing in the universe and start trying to explain this sudden, inexplicable, terrible writing in contrast to the rest of the manga's good writing. We had all these theories about why Minazuki did that. For example, maybe an editor mandate said that he couldn't have an eight-year-old killing people, and so had to write around that so that chaos wasn't technically the cause of Hiyori's death. But in the wake of Plunderer's atrocity, it's just incredibly clear to me that Minazuki has an obsession with big dramatic visuals, and will twist and bend the story however he needs to in order to arrive at those visuals. And Hiyori killing herself is a big dramatic visual, so it'll happen even if nothing about it makes any sense. But SNO at least had the benefit of A, really good, well-developed characters, and B, robots that are, as the phrase goes, so advanced they are indistinguishable from magic, both of which provide you a lot of writing leeway. But Plunderer has neither of those things, and so the writing flaws are so much more visible here than they ever were back then. All the worst parts of SNO are what make up the lifeblood of Plunderer, and so gleaning an insight into SNO from Plunderer is a super interesting experience for me. So, sure, Plunderer might be the worst anime of the season, and will probably get rightfully torn apart by every single anime critic on YouTube. And, sure, Minazuki might have ruined his own reputation and the legacy of his past and future work, but at least I got to learn a little bit about SNO. So that's neat. Hey everyone, thank you guys so much for watching. I have a Twitter, follow me there, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see my new videos, very occasionally. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later. Divide the plunger so we don't have to wonder if we lose all our treasure that we won't fight is never so we divide the plunger that